Hello there guys and welcome to the second episode of Viking Gear Review. Today we have quite a nerdy theme. It will be about the historical accuracy of newly made Viking stuff. I want to show you the difference between replica version stylization. When I start crafting the Viking item, I want to make it as close to the original as possible, so the user could get the same experience and feelings as a medieval man had while using the original. But usually it's quite hard to achieve this result because there is lack of information in the internet and even in the historical books. To make a proper replica, you need a good drawings of the item. And often the best result you can get is one or two projections in the book. But it's not enough. For the most items you need at least three projections, and it's good if you have proper photos and accurate dimensions. And if you're really lucky, you'll have a 3D model. But it rarely happens. I know only one site which has such models. That's uh, Samlinger National Museum of Denmark. So, in most cases, everything you have is a few photographs of an item, poor description, and a few dimensions. So, let's get to the topic. When I say replica, I mean the exact copy of an item. All the dimensions and materials should be the same as on the original. Of course, there can be some minor differences, because in the medieval times it was handmade, and now it is a handmade item. But the main idea is to make it as close to the original as possible. But sometimes, for some reason, you can't or don't want to make a replica, so you make a version of an item instead. Maybe you don't have enough information, or want to add an ornament, or change some dimensions to your needs. Of course it's possible in reenactment reality, or you just want an item based on the archaeological find. So the main idea when making a version is to follow the logic of an item, and make changes that could be done at that time. These changes should be based on other finds of that type of item, made at that time and in that region. These are not three scientific definitions, that's just the main principles I used when working. But why I have decided to make such a boring video? Well, because I have a good example of replica and version. Here they are. That's the Birka balls. They can seem similar to each other, but they're principally different. Let's look at the workbench. Here they are, our two Birka balls. Both are based on one archaeological find. One is replica, one is version. When they're staying, you can't say what is what. But if I make like this, you can see the difference. These differences can seem not that important, and they are not, because they don't influence the ball that much, but the principles used while working are different. I'll show you the original find. Now you can see that this one is a replica. And this one is a version. This one has a band, which the original one had. And this one doesn't have it. This band requires much extra work, especially if it's beech wood. Why was it on the original, we don't know. But it was there. And if it's a replica, we should make it. And one more thing, I couldn't take anything but beech wood for the replica, because only beech wood comes in thick 7 cm boards. And I need such thick boards to make this bend. Otherwise I have to walk with small logs or green wood, and that's just more difficulties. But we can avoid all these difficulties by making a version. Just don't make this bend, and we don't need the thick boards. The height is less, so the boards can be just 5 cm thick. Now we don't need that height, so we can use any wood we like. For example, alder wood, like here. It's much easier to carve it, and it takes much less time to make a bowl. So why do we need a replica then, if it's much harder to make? Because the experience we get is closer to the original, and also we get more information. Maybe it was more comfortable to use it, easier to hold, or it was just a woodcarver's idea. And if we don't make this bend, we'll lose the information, and we'll never know what's the point, and was it there. I don't think this exact change is that critical, but if these changes are starting to accumulate, that's where it can get worse. You can end up somewhere here, or here. <laughs> that's absolutely alright, but is it the goal you wanted to achieve? It's okay if you just want to have fun, go camping and have a rest, but if you want to get a real medieval experience, you have to be careful and remember all these details and changes you've made. 
All the small changes in your costume and gear can make difference. Maybe they will, maybe they will not, but you don't know until you try. So both replicas and versions are needed, but you have to understand what you are using and why. So that's all for today, thank you very much for watching, please press likes, dislikes and subscribe buttons, leave your comments. This video won't get many views, so I really want to know what do you think about it, and every opinion is important for me.